Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achana. Welcome to episode 7 of Network Chat Programming. So I am back home in Melbourne, Australia, um, which feels awesome. So hopefully these videos will be a bit more often, even though I do have university and other responsibilities here. Um, I do have a decent upload speed and a con freaking connection to the internet that I don't have to pay a lot of money for. So that means that there should be more videos. Anyway, straight to it. So uh, right now, if we just launch our program here and put something in for the port so it doesn't crash, hit log in and we get this. This is what we've got so far. We can actually type here. And uh, this uses the grid bag layout so you can see it kind of resizes. Weirdly, we need to fix that up obviously. But um, you can see that when we actually go past the width, it doesn't, our characters don't um, actually, if I move it over here so you guys can see probably, um, the characters actually stop. So in other words, what's happening is it's resizing the actual um, uh, text area, okay? So that's all cool, but um, let's take a look at how we can uh, actually utilize grid back layout properly with the different um, weights so that we resize everything properly and add more components. So first thing I want to do is actually copy this UI manager code to um, to write over here because we didn't, didn't do that. Um, and we'll import that and that'll actually unimport the um, the border layout that we had imported that we didn't need. So that works out nicely. Um, one more thing I want to mention is MumuHK actually pointed out the create window um, was a, uh, it was unconventional to call it because I'm calling something from the constructor, but it's all right because it's private, which means that no one's going to override this, this method at all because it's private. You can't actually override it. You could probably override it within this class, but we're not going to be doing it. Um, but it is private. So that's one thing to make sure if you're, um, doing that to, to, uh, to prevent, you know, future embarrassment, um, by pointing that out. <laughs> Am I right? Okay. So yeah. So in other words, it's all right to call, um, this method from the um, constructor because it's not, you can't override it. Anyway, um, so how does this actually work? Let's just add a few more components so that we can see really what we're dealing with. If I switch over to design, you'll see what I mean. Okay, cool. So um, we've got our design here. What I wanna do is add more buttons essentially. So I'm just gonna grab a J button, pop it like right over here. You can see that we get this massive button here in a minute. Um, and we'll just call it a uh, send. Yeah, that'll be like our send button. Um, we don't want it to be here. We want it to be over there, right? So what we need to do is actually make a space for it. Um, and we'll actually probably have to do that through code. I'm not sure how to do that with um, Window Builder, but that's all right. We don't need to. We just need to do it through code. So the way that I'm going to do this is um, essentially add a um, the, the Y is good, right? The Y is good, but I think the um, the X is what we really need to change. So in the column widths, we've got this massive column column here that is actually 857 pixels wide. We might want to split that up and let's just say, um, okay, so we'll split it up. Let's just say we leave like, I don't know, 30 or so pixels for the button. Let's just see what that looks like. So I'm going to um, subtract 30 from there and add it as another parameter here and not another parameter, but another um, integer here into the array. And in grid X, I'm actually gonna change that to two. So in other words, zero over here in grid X, zero in grid X corresponds to the first um, index in this array. One corresponds to the second one and two corresponds to the third one. And of course, four corresponds to the fourth, uh, th three, sorry, corresponds to the fourth um, one. But of course, arrays start with zero. So zero, one, two, and three, that's how it works. Um, so if I go to, and let's just switch over to design here, what we should see is our button in a different area here. Now what, what happens here is that um, our text area actually gets resized. So if I actually launch this so you guys can see this a bit better, you can see that we've kind of achieved more or less what we wanted, but not really because this text area now doesn't actually, it, it doesn't actually appear here, yet we want it to. So how do we, how do we change that? That's another thing we gotta look at. Um, and let's just take a look at, what do we want to do? Um, we'll also add one more component here, a, um, a text field. We'll add it right over here at the very bottom here. We'll call it, um, I don't know, message maybe. And then we'll get rid of the text here. I called it message again, just so it called the variable message. Otherwise it wouldn't know what to call it. Um, and 
it's assigned it to a pretty good spot, so let's take a look at that. Five. Okay, so now you can see we've more or less got, um, this is actually in a perfect space right here. We've got our send button up here and we've got our text area that we kind of need to resize. So let's take a look at how we can do this. Column weights um, is to do with resizing. Weight is generally to do with resizing, but what we really need to take a look at here is um, the widths and the height. Okay, so what we need to do is make um, a grid width essentially. So what we've got over here is um, our text area, which we want to actually, if I just move this so I can demonstrate to you guys what's up. Um, we want this uh, uh, text area here to span multiple grid cells, right? We, we can see that we've got multiple grid cells if we just look at this. We've got this one right here, we've got this one here. You can actually see the dividers here. We've got this here, we've got this area here, and we want this area here. We essentially want um, our, our text area to not only encompass this cell, but also this one. We want to span it across these two cells. How do we do that? Now, you could probably just drag it across, just like that, you can see that works. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do it through code, um, just because it, it's useful. Um, so what we wanna do is, we wanna grab this text history variable, and we want to add a new, um, we want to set a, um, another variable here manually called grid width, yeah? And grid width will actually, if this comes up in the Java doc, won't yet, let's just set it to zero for now so we can see. Um, okay, actually I don't have source attached, but um, what grid width does is that actually uh, specifies how many cells this component will take up. So one is the default, one is just one cell, but if we put it to two and run it, and put a port in here. What we'll actually get is, as you can see, this this um, text area now spans both of these cells, which is awesome. And this is actually looking pretty good right now. Okay, I'm not complaining. It's looking pretty good. We've got our send button. We've got um this thing. The send button looks slightly above the text uh, the text field. It's not actually above it. It's just a bit. It's just not as high. So we might want to make this button a bit larger. Um, and we'll do that in a minute, certainly. But um. It also looks like our uh, text area here is just a bit um, too far. So I might just subtract the width here. So the width of our text area is currently set to, actually, I actually have no idea where are we? What is it set to? Where do we set it? Um, let's see, text area. Where do we set the, um, Oh yeah, of course, we don't set that manually. Um, okay, so uh, let's um, let's just set this to probably about, if we just add it, add seven to it. So if we add, uh, if we change it to 23, we can probably subtract it from here and see what that looks like. Um, there's really not much insets. We might add some insets to it to fix that if this um, destroys it the look. Yeah, so that's kind of working here, but it's still, not good enough, so let's maybe move this down to 15 and this up to 28. As long as it adds up to 880, you can do pretty much anything with these to make it a bit better. Okay, I'm definitely gonna add some insets. So to add insets, um, which you can see we actually, our button has insets here, but um, we can add insets and those are essentially just really minor adjustments just to a specific component in the grid back layout. So um, if we go down here, pick up our variable here, uh, and if we set the insets equal to new, oops, equal to new insets, and we probably want, let's just try it, let's just, so we can obviously say it 20, right, and run this. What that's going to do, predictably, is um, inset us by 20. I believe, I'm not sure which direction that is, if we just try, let's just try all directions. Definitely not one direction. <laughs> you can see that it insets it in all directions. Um, I thought that this one would be X, but it's clearly not. So I think if by this logic, I honestly have no idea. This, this could be a million different things. Let's just um, take a look at if we leave it over there. All right, so that's the bottom. So I guess this would be the um, left. If it's going clockwise, I don't know. No, that's the right. 
Okay, so it's this one, I guess. Okay, confusing. Um, so, yeah, okay. So let's just insert this by probably about five pixels or so and um, see what that looks like. So insets are pretty much padding. I'm just padding this by about five pixels. That looks um, that looks perfect, actually. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Um, so that's pretty much what our thing will look like. A few adjustments I want to make is first of all the size of our button. So um, if we take a look at this, now our button's pretty much the same size, isn't it? It should be the same size as this. This is just slightly, um, I think the deal is that the text messages, the box is just bigger. I'm not sure. It looks pretty good to me though. So I'm probably going to leave it at that. But what I wanted to do was make this non-editable because this is our, um, this thing here, if I, if I just log in again, this thing here is our um, message history. We definitely don't want that to be editable. And when we, um, we, we just want to send stuff to it. We don't want people to be able to um, we might want people to copy and paste from it, that's fine, we'll allow that, but we don't want people to type stuff into it. Um, and then when we do actually log in, we want this um, field over here to be selected by default so that people can type in straight away and hit enter to send, or hit the send button, of course, um, just so it looks a bit better. So let's do that. Um, to make this non-editable, we simply need to uncheck the editable um, box here, so this is how easy Window Builder gives it to us. And anyway, if we take a look at the source code, what is done is it's simply set editable to false for the text area. And then what we can do here in our, um, at the very end, I like to do this at the very end, we, uh, text message is our um, field. We can actually just, um, uh, what was it focusing again? Is it set? No, it's not set focus, is it? Um, it's request focus. Sorry, I completely forgot that. Um, we can just request focus on that component. So if we run this again, See that as soon as I log in, um, we can actually type here, and no, we can't. Okay, so what's up with that? There are a few, um, this is why I like to do it at the very end, there are a few little quirks here with the request focus. We should probably request focus to the actual component first, um, to the big thing first. Take a look at that. And no, okay, sometimes this is operating system dependent and um, not really working, but we'll figure out the request focus stuff probably in a later episode. Um, but other than that, we shouldn't be able to edit um, this anymore, right? We can only type here. Okay, so that is episode seven of Network Chat Programming. Um, we're probably going to take a look at actual um, network code, probably not next episode, the episode after, because I want to cover um, the stuff about uh, actually getting the starter and maybe and probably um, sending it to the uh, message history. But anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. And I'll see you guys next time with a brand new episode of Network Chat Programming. See you guys later. Bye.